Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And this week is all about super speedy photo editing. Now, some people love the process of editing photos. However, I don't. I want to be spending less time in front of my computer and more time outside adventuring and behind the camera. So if you're like me, then this tutorial is for you. So welcome to my favorite Lightroom plugin, but also good standalone program in 2020. Let's do it. So I asked Luminar for an affiliate link and they gave me one. So if at any point during this tutorial, you wanna check it out or go for the seven day trial, then just click the link in the description. We're gonna break this down into three sections. One for portrait photography, one for landscape photography, and one for like conceptual photography. So if photography is not your primary business, what are ways you can use photography and this photo editing software to enhance your business and speed up your process with photos to help what you do. All right, let's jump into Lightroom and get started. So I have this photo here that my friend Mike took. Mike is from Calgary. He's an amazing portrait slash like mountain outdoor photographer. He's got some excellent stuff. I suggest you check him out. He took this photo. I actually forgot all of my hard drives in Montreal. I don't, don't have any of my stuff with me. So I asked him, hey, do you mind if I borrow one of your photos for this editing tutorial? And he's like, sure, no problem. So he sent me this picture of the model, Ash Harris. I'll also link her Instagram in the description below as well. So I'm gonna just give this a slight little tweaking before we bring it over to Luminar. Now I am going to bring this over to Luminar and edit the portrait there. And then afterwards, I'm gonna do the same thing in Lightroom and see how long it takes me in Lightroom to do what I do in Luminar. All right, let's bring it over. So I just right click this photo and edit in Luminar 4, easy. And then that will bring me over to Luminar. We're here in Luminar and I'm gonna go straight to the portrait enhancer. All right, skin enhancer. So first of all, I'm gonna click AI skin defects removal and it will remove major blemishes on the skin. Her skin is really good anyway, so you can't see much difference. If I click before and after, you see two removals on the chin. Okay, let's slide the skin enhancer, slide the halfway, and let's see the difference. So that is really holding the detail, but smoothing out the skin nicely. Oh yeah, it's a nice difference already. Let's go all the way so we get the max difference. It's a little too smooth, but just so you can see the difference. So I'm gonna bring that back down just to about maybe halfway, I like that. And then shine removal is similar to bringing down highlights. I think it does a slightly better job. Let's close that, look at the portrait enhancer. Now this is where I believe the software really stands out. So face light, something that you always got, want to do in portraits is really brighten up the face as that is the part of the photo that the eye is drawn towards. And by brightening the face up, you also it also helps to remove dark spots and shadows, increases eye whitening. The eyes, I believe, are already quite white, so I don't need to do much of that. But if I max it out, you'll see what difference it makes. Eye Enhancer, this is a really nice tool here. This just brings out those details in her eyes. There's the before and after of the eyes. Wow, that really shows it nicely. Got some galaxies going on in there. Dark circle removal, there's really no dark circles in her face here as she's looking directly up at light. So there's no shadows whatsoever. Don't need to do any dark circle removal. Okay, this next section here is a bit of photo manipulation. This is like Photoshop. I mean, I don't really use these tools ever, especially Lightroom doesn't have them. So you have to go to Photoshop to do this. In this particular case, we can actually slim her face a little bit because she's lying down and the gravity could be pushing her face wider. So I'll use this in a little bit and see what that does to bring her face in. As you can see, it brings it in a little bit. Now the same thing with enlarge the eyes. I'm not gonna blow out her eyes and make it look fake, but let's say she's squinting a little bit because of too much light, we can kind of bring those back to what they were or what they normally are. So I'll bring the, I'll enlarge them a little bit. So here is the before and after of this face thinning and eye enlargement. <clears throat> Let me give you an idea of the max eye enlargement just for fun. Ding! <laughs> Uh, okay, let's bring this back. Oh man, I can't get over how good the skin is. And the eyes. Okay. I like this tool here, improve eyebrows. Just darkens down the eyebrows. That's really good. Kind of matches her hair tone with the darker eyebrows. And then these lips darkening, redness, saturation, you can choose what you want with that. I'm not going to really use that. I'll whiten her teeth a bit. I'm going to warm this photo up a little bit. I like what that does to her skin tone. Maybe bring the saturation down 
Woo! Loving that. Okay, once you apply the differences, it will just send a copy back to Lightroom. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing in Lightroom and I'll speed it up for you. Here we go. go. So Luminar has looked at the data for the most popular actions in editing software for editing portraits and just made that AI. So you just need to use sliders. So now I'm going to edit the same photo in Luminar from the beginning to the end. All right, so there we have the difference between my Lightroom edit and the Luminar edit. To be honest, I like the eyes better in Luminar. The quality of the skin tone is a bit better too. So as you can see, I can edit my portraits much faster in Luminar and still achieve very similar results. This summer, I shot my first wedding and with, with weddings, you have to provide the clients with hundreds of photos and many of those are portraits and close-up shots. And I had to go through meticulously and edit out all the blemishes and do the eyes and the, the, the skin and the teeth. And that takes a very long time. However, what you can do now in Luminar 4 is you just adjust the AI sliders and then save that as a look, a Luminar look, then just batch the edit. So you have just, just select batch edit and you just drop in all the photos you want to be edited and the AI detects all the eyes and skin, etc., and that is done within minutes. So if you're a wedding photographer, you know how much time you spend editing skin. So that is a major time saver, which provides a lot of value. All right, next up we have landscape photography and how Luminar can help in that regard. So this is particularly amazing for real estate photography. And I was in Thailand shooting for this villa. This villa wanted some aerial photography and they brought us out there for five days. And during this week that we were there, it was so hazy. Every morning we woke up for sunrise, every evening we shot sunset and it was just haze nonstop. So of course the client was super bummed and not of course at us, but just the way weather is until we gave them some of these shots that I'm about to show you. All right, here are the photos. As you can see, lots of haze in the sky. Lots up there, can't even see the sun really. And this is a shot away from the sun, but all haze in the sky. All right, let's right click, edit in Luminar, and here we go. So clicking on the creative tab, go to sky replacement, select sky selection. I'm gonna go down to sunset one. And immediately it doesn't look so good, but if I blend the horizon and also lift the horizon position, then it brings more of the sun into the shot and that actually starting to look a lot better. Few other adjustments we need to make. We need to close the gaps as that brings the mountains in. You see that? Let me take it away. And you'll see what happens when I take it away. So let's close the gaps. If the sun is on the wrong side, casting the wrong shadows, you can flip the sky by clicking that button. And if we just raise the temperature up, I think that matches more the look of the photo to be a bit better there. Oh, I love that look, that's great. Okay, let's check another sky. Sunset two, sun's in the middle, so not really gonna work, but I still like it. Sunset three, again, sun's in the middle, but that fits nicely. If we could bring the sky temperature just a bit more blue. Wow, that's nice. If only the shadows matched up. You can relight the scene there, make it darker. Wow, that's actually a really beautiful photo. Okay, we'll go to sunset four. It doesn't exactly match, but if we bring the sky temperature a bit warmer, it might fit. Not bad, not bad. I do like sunset one the best. But again, if you have your own sunsets, you can use your own photos as well. No need to use the pre-selected ones. Okay, let's try this other one with a really hazy kind of flat sky and replace it. That one works. Actually, the works really well. Let's try sunset two. Also really works well. Let's try some of the dramatic sunsets. That works really well. Bring the position down a bit. Oops. Yeah, that could work well. Try three. Let's lift the position up. That's even fine as well. That works, we'll make it warmer. Ah, I really like that, wow. That's my favorite one so far. 
even if it's in the middle of the day let's try like blue sky yep i like it so there you go I have an example of how i use sky replacement for client photography especially when you have a limited amount of time sure i would love to stay there for a month and get the absolute authentic pure photo but you know what sometimes we have to compromise when we only have a few days in thailand so that was an excellent compromise super glad they had that for me otherwise i just would have spent so much time in photoshop all right next up i want to show how this software can be useful for creatives or people in the entrepreneur professions such as like fitness yoga instructors environmental conservationists bloggers graphic designers artists painters drawers the list goes on if you're in a creative space you work online a photo is likely very much a big part of your profession so i'll give you some examples of a vibe you might want to go for i'm going to cut out the sun and just use that crop right there and bring the saturation down all right let's bring it over to luminar and see what we can do with this all right let's go over to the creative section at the side and we're going to do augmented sky and we're going to select an object to put in there so I don't know what we can do. We can stick some clouds in there, birds. Let's try some, let's try some birds. It's a lot of birds. Let's try something else. Uh, fireworks. <laughs> All right. That actually is kind of cool. Now let's say I found that maybe the, a planet is good. Okay, we want to go for like this out of this world type vibe. Let's go with the moon instead, yeah. All right, I'm gonna place this big moon there. Clearly it's a manipulated photo, but you're, get, you're picking up some sort of thing there. The value of the moon. Let's say we wanna put another thing on top. Let's just add a layer. I'm gonna create a new stamped layer. And now we can go back to our creative thing and add, let's say some clouds. Okay, we've got our clouds. I want the moon to be in front. So edit the mask, brush, hit the option, and it was painted with the clouds that are in front of the moon. There we go, we have a dreamy vibe. Again, yoga instructors, chrysalis, holistic healers, all value the power of the moon. So you can get this look quite easily in Photoshop as well. However, I find it quite easy to work with it here. So that's just a great additional tool. That could be useful, maybe, I don't know. I'm just trying to give an example of how this tool can provide value for someone who's not a photography specialist. So one con to the program is it does require a lot of processing power. I have the new 16 inch Mac and it is running at full capacity right now. So it is whirling and getting pretty warm. You can hear that it is whirling. I mean, my computer can handle it no problem, but it's definitely laboring. So if you have an older computer, then you will require longer wait times. And one general thing I have to say about all photography is that photography is subjective. You might love something and another person might hate it and that's completely fine. I just wanted to show you how this program is helping speed up my workflow and maybe that can help you too. If not, no worries, then maybe the next video can help you out. Again, if you're considering the program and you wanna support me, then click the affiliate link in my description and get your seven day free trial. Don't forget to like and comment down below. Please consider subscribing if you aren't already and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.